Okay, so you may have heard about centering divs, but what about folding divs? Runway.com did it. I thought it was super cool. Here's how you can do it yourself. Okay, so before we actually do a rundown on code, I'm gonna do a really quick one on paper. I think it's kind of the easiest way to actually see what's gonna happen here. So pretend we have an element that looks something like this. In CSS, we have ways of tilting elements, so rotating elements forward and back, side to side, but we don't actually have ways of folding elements. Unfortunately, is exactly what we need to do for this effect. But there is one little hack that we can do that kind of allows us to do that, and that is actually by bringing in a second element. So in this example, hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing here. We have one element, and then we have a duplicate of that element that is ex essentially the exact same thing. And what we can do from that point is for one of our elements, we can use the clip path property to actually cut off the bottom of that element. So now it looks something like that. And then we'll do the exact same thing for the bottom element, cutting off the bottom half, which then when you line these up together, hopefully I didn't completely mess this up, but we should have something that looks like our main element. Now, once we're actually at this point, we can tilt the top or the bottom element independent of the other one. And that gives us this fold effect, which is what we're actually going for. Enough actually talking about it. Hopefully this wasn't super dumb. Let's actually look at some code now. I'll be using React and Tailwind CSS for this walkthrough. And I'll start by creating a reusable component to house our foldable content. I'll add some basic styles, but allow for overwriting of these styles using a custom class name. This way we can pass in whatever content we want, give it its own background color and text colors, then render it out like this. We can create many of these by hand. I'll instead opt to take it in as a prop with a list of these elements. And for now, we can just render out the first one. We'll add some basic styling to the wrapping div, as well as center our content using absolute positioning. We'll need this later so that we can stack multiple of these elements on top of each other. With all of that, we should now have something that looks like this. I'll also add a basic line through using a horizontal rule. This really just kind of helps to sell the illusion that the element is folding. We'll render out our main content, passing in a list with as many items as we'd like. And remember that for now, we'll just be rendering out the first one. To start building our animation, however, we'll first need some way to automatically flip through all of our elements, as well as determine the stacking order of those elements. To achieve this, we can create some state called index in this case, which will track how many times we've actually iterated through our elements. We'll also create a ref, which will need to track the return value of a set interval. That set interval, we'll just call from a use effect function, incrementing our index on a set schedule, then cleaning it up after we're done. Now, instead of just rendering out the first item in our array, we'll render out the item at the given index, modded by the length of our items list to make sure that we don't go out of bounds of our array's length. All of this together should give us a result where we're steadily flipping through each of our elements every two and a half seconds. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we'll need to cut and duplicate our elements in order to create our fold effect. To slice our elements in half, we can use the clip path property to cut the bottom half of our existing element off. This should give us something that looks like this. And now we can add a duplicate of our existing element instead cutting off the top half, leaving us with what looks like one complete element. To begin rotating our element, let's first turn our divs into motion.divs using the Framer Motion Animation Library. With this, we'll need to move our X and Y transforms to our style prop. This is so that motion knows how to actually add them together with our transforms. By example, we can rotate our top element by whatever value, let's say 20 degrees, which we can see keeps our positioning and slightly rotates our top element towards us. Next, we'll wrap our elements with Animate Presence, also an import from Framer Motion. This gives us access to exit animations. We'll also add Z index properties to both elements based on the current index state to make sure that everything stacks properly. And finally, add a key prop to each component so that motion can track elements as they're added and removed from the DOM. And now we can finally add our rotate animations. The top element should not rotate when it's added to the DOM, but it should rotate negative 180 degrees whenever it exits the DOM, and really the exact opposite can be done to our bottom element, starting at 180 degrees, rotating back to zero degrees on mount, and then not rotating anymore on exit. Now this is almost there, but it leaves us with a couple of small things that we still need to clean up. First things first, let's slow our animation down a little bit. We can do this with frame or motion by using the transition prop, adding in a duration of say 0.75 seconds and an ease of ease in out. And let's also set the back face visibility property to hidden. This makes sure that rotated elements aren't visible as they stack on top of other elements. For a little bit of extra sauce, we can also rotate our wrapping div by some amount, setting the transform style to preserve 3D. And now we're left with a final polished animation. Source code for everything down in the description, along with a bunch of other cool animated UI components like this one, which uses a very similar effect to what we walked through today. If you've learned anything from this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Anyways, until next time, peace.